hello everyone. Uh, welcome. Thank you for tuning in to our virtual opening uh, this evening uh, for our for the West Van Arts Council's uh, new exhibition at the Silk Purse Arts Center, Natural Portraits, uh, featuring hello, three uh, incredibly talented into uh, artists. Opening, uh, uh, to turn that sound down a little bit. Uh, so before we uh, get started, uh, it's important that we uh, not only acknowledge, but actively recognize and uh, respect that we are currently, uh, for most people watching, on the unceded territories of uh, the Coast Salish peoples. Um, and if you're here in West Vancouver, where the gallery is, uh, those are the Squamish and Musqueam peoples. And we are ever so grateful as guests to be here uh, with our wonderful hosts and neighbors. And, uh, being here on this land is kind of part of what the exhibition is about. Uh, since it's called Natural Portraits, a lot of the pieces depict uh, uh, landscapes and, uh, and the wildlife um, around us. Uh, so uh, I will be your host this evening. My name is Steven Snyder. I am the Gallery and Communications Coordinator for the West Van Arts Council. And let's uh, introduce our amazing artists. We have, uh, we have painter Juan Li Zhang, sculptor Michael Ray, and uh, textile artist Kirsten Chersonoff. So why don't uh, all of our uh, talented artists uh, introduce themselves and uh, give you a little bit of background. Uh, let's start with Wan Li. Hello everyone. My name is Wan Li Zhang, uh, Zhang Wan Li in Chinese. Um, I was originally um, from China. I was born in West China where the border is more close to, the border city is close to, more close to this uh, Pakistan, Afghanistan, or Stan. Anyway, um, but um, I studied uh, fine arts in Xi'an Academy of Fine Arts. Xi'an is a city in the center of China where the Terry Quota warriors were famous. Um, anyway, I studied seven years and I had my um, bachelor and master degree there and later um, as a teacher teaching there for a few years. And then I moved to Canada in 1990. So before I came to Canada, the first time I saw a group of sevens art books, not original work, I was so enchanted by Lauren Harris's work. And I thought, this is a beautiful country, you know, I want to live there. So here I am, <laughs> I'm happy. Well, um, ever since I came here, hmm, 30 years, that's fast. Um, I'm uh, teaching private um, art classes in my home studio and uh, painting. And uh, I have, uh, my subject is actually uh, quite uh, different. I do a lot of figures and portraits still life, landscape, and the illustrations. Yeah, I do a lot of things, but um, landscape I love because we have such a beautiful scenery everywhere. Okay, and that's about it, I think. <laughs> awesome, uh, that's great. Uh, Mike, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, uh, born in Kenora, Ontario. Uh, my dad was RCMP, so we moved around a bit. Uh, came out to Langley in 1961, and I completed all my um, sort of uh, regular schooling there. And went to Langara, uh, Vancouver College, and completed the fine arts program there. And uh, uh, designed playgrounds for five years. Uh, got in, got into. Um, uh, that wasn't leading me where I wanted to go. So I ended up going into logistics in the private sector and then in the public sector. And I retired about 11 years ago and um, I've been sort of rekindling my, my sculpture. Uh, my sculpture is uh, pretty much all uh, reductive uh, sculpture. And um, I am fascinated by uh, uh, natural animal forms, uh, mainly in the Pacific Northwest, and I use all natural Pacific Northwest materials, rocks, wood, um, and that pretty much tells you the story of 
of of what my motivation is. Um, the the I guess if if you if you want me to talk about um, form, um, I want to I wanted to I want to in my work be able to leave my viewer at ease. I want I want my forms to be easily recognizable but I don't want them to be a model. What I want to do is I want people to look at my work, recognize what it is so they're comfortable with it, but then enjoy the form and flow and body and mass of the, of the actual work. And so that, that's what I sort of work towards overall. Um, and um, my mother was a painter. I'm not much of a 2D uh, kind of person. I've done some printmaking. I've done some drawing and that kind of thing. But uh, it's it's sculpture is my first love. That's Thanks. Cool. <laughs> That's great. Uh, Kirsten, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us a bit about you? Sure. Hi, my name is Kirsten, and I grew up in New Westminster, and eventually studied um, over on the North Shore here. And I did the textile art program, which is no longer at Capilano College, but I was privileged enough to be part of that program for a few years. So I, my first study was environmental studies and then I went into textiles. So with this show here at the gallery now, I'm able to combine those two together with a love of biology and some of our um, local ocean species that we have around the, the waters of BC. Um, so that's been a big inspiration for me. Uh, let's see, on my creative journey, I've worked at a few different art galleries. I've taken classes here and there. Um, I've belonged to a few textile arts guilds over the years. I give presentations of my artwork to different guilds and art groups and sometimes museums. Um, I've been a little bit more on the craft side of things, but I'm also involved in the art side. So I'm kind of walking this line in between the two. I get to work with very tactile materials um, and what else? Let's see, um, over the last few years, some people might have seen the work I've done involving birds. So I've embroidered a lot of our local birds around Vancouver. And um, with the seashore pieces that are included in the show, it's just a real love of mine. I've spent a lot of time on the coast visiting Tofino and we live in Vancouver's West End so I can walk in almost any direction and I'm at the ocean. So that's been a big inspiration for me as well. That's great. Awesome. Well, thank you for giving us some background uh, on you. Uh, that's great. So a little bit of a, a Q&A uh, for, for our artists. Um, so uh, each of you talked about this uh, a little bit already, but if you want to expand a little bit further, um, the exhibition is all about showcasing uh, and capturing uh, nature and the wildlife around us. So what draws each of you uh, to the subject matter? Uh, let's, start with, uh, let's start with Kirsten. Um. Yeah, as I mentioned, I love um, being surrounded by nature here in BC. And I grew up going to places like the Vancouver Aquarium and the Gulf Islands and down to our local beaches. So it was a really great place to, to grow up. Um, at some point I started to realize, you know, what's going on with the planet and I'd go for walks on the beach and I'd see a lot of garbage. And I started to collect things. Um, I started to collect plastic netting and other types of garbage that I would find. I don't know if you can see this kind of <laughs> mm -hmm. um, things like that, that I would find down at the beach and quickly realized that that doesn't belong there. So for years I collected that material and, you know, really wanted to do something with it in my art. And I was going to do it in a previous marine show. But many years back, there was a giant oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico. And as I was preparing for a previous exhibition, I would hear that in the news all the time. And so I decided instead of working with the beach plastic that I found, I would stage a mini oil spill on one of my art pieces. So wow. I did that at an opening reception um, live. It was the first time I destroyed a piece of my own artwork. So that was quite exciting. And <laughs> <laughs> I always wanted to revisit uh, the subject matter that I did for that show as well. So, um, and hopefully bringing some attention. There's one piece in the show called Entangled. I think I'll talk about that in a few more minutes too, with a whale that um, has become entangled in marine debris and fishing lines and things like that. So um, I was hoping with the show to 
um, explore the beauty of nature, but also the precariousness of things and the, you know, how humans have um, played a role in what's happening to nature right now. But, but really it is the beauty of it that, that draws me in and the details and working with textiles, I'm able to just draw the viewer in to see those little details and hopefully appreciate the things that I see um, and make them look a little bit closer. And what about you, Mike? What draws you to, to the subject matter? Um, like Kirsten, I have a love for the West Coast and I, I, I've grown up here since I was a little boy. And so um, a lot of the places that she's mentioned um, were, were places that, that we would go. Um, but um, uh, similar, but sort of different, I, I find um, it in, interesting to, um, to take almost found goods. For instance, the shark, I said I was gonna talk a little bit about the shark. Um, the shark is a cherry, is a wild uh, BC cherry tree that I cut down in my backyard. <laughs> it was shadowing the garden and um, it was an unattractive and a sickly tree. And so uh, we took it down and um, I turned it into that sculpture. So um, <clears throat> it's, um, I call him George, uh, for George Washington for cutting down the cherry tree. <laughs> But yeah, um, I really enjoy um, uh, taking taking things that are are a lot of people would consider cast off, um, and um, <clears throat> something I I'm gonna I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna show you guys. Um, it's a piece I've just recently finished. It's um, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to see this can. I can't see full screen, so I can't see what I'm showing you. Anyway, this is a six foot long uh, beluga whale. And it is, um, it's, a, it's an, almost an exact copy of Kila. And Kila was the first um, beluga whale uh, raised and born in captivity at, at the Vancouver Aquarium. She was one of two belugas unfortunately, who passed away. I don't, can you guys see any of this? Anyway. Yeah, yeah, we, can see yeah we can get most, most of it's in shot, can, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah it's, it's actually kind of big to try and get into the entire picture. But um, yeah, so uh, my plan with this, and I've contacted the Vancouver Aquarium, is that I will sell it and I will donate 50% of the proceeds to the Vancouver Aquarium because, of course, they're in, uh, they're in dire straits financially. And um, so that's, that's, that's one of the things I've been doing. I'm intrigued by um, Kirsten's um, uh, humpback whales, because I'm actually working on a five foot tall cedar uh, humpback whale that's breaching. And, um, and I'm about, oh, I'd say probably three quarters of the way through that. So yeah, so yes, um, Northwest, Northwest Materials, um, I find rocks, uh, the Chehalis River, uh, I've gone as, um, I've gone all, all over up country, I've gone to a, uh, called the Yalakum Valley, um, up north of um, Lillooet looking for jade, I've, I've found some jade and I don't think I'll ever carve jade again because it's harder than steel. <laughs> it literally, it has a Rockwell hard, hardness harder than, 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 uh, than carbon steel, so yeah. And yeah, I went through a lot of blades working on that. I made, I made a made a rabbit. Anyway, um, that's enough for me. I think it's Wan Lee's turn. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah, Wan Lee, what draws you to, to the subject matter you paint? Well, from Kristen and Mike's uh, story, I think we're all very similar. I would say I never choose the subject. The subject choose me, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Like we only are where we live, where what we see, what we experience. So uh, like me, um, my backyard is Trout Lake, right? So I'll just walk out to paint whatever, you know, I, I feel like it. So I, I really enjoyed 
the all the you know season season change, particularly the um, autumn and the winter is my favorite um, subject. Like I like the more than spring and summer. Yeah, and uh, yeah, what I say is like we we live in such a beautiful place. So you know, you guys are doing wildlife. And I'm doing trees mainly yeah. uh, in different season, and uh, a lot of uh, in, in my painting, I seldomly paint leaves, no leaves. Even it's not in the um, um, winter. Uh, the yellow head, uh, one of the painting, the, the the trees are just the bare branches because it was uh, the the beetles destroyed the trees, right? And I just feel that, uh, you know, the, the sadness, but also, you know, it's the, the harsh truth. And uh, I found the beauty of it. Yeah, that's it. That's great. That's lovely. Uh, and some of you touched on this a little bit when you were uh, talking about uh, what draws you to uh, depicting uh, nature. Um, but each of you work in very, very different and very distinct uh, media. Um, so what is it uh, about this particular media that, that you find to be, uh, uh, what suits you best to be able to express yourself? You know? So what is it about uh, textiles that allows you to capture vision? What is it about painting that, uh, that can express what you feel? What is it about wood and stone um, that gets across what you're thinking and feeling? Um, Wang Li, let's start with you. Oh, again? Um, well, oil. I actually study printmaking. So if you look at on the wall, I have black and white wood. <laughs> right? um, I did mostly wood log or anyway, black and white, sun colored, uh, lithograph. Uh, those things. So, uh, Mike, earlier you said you did some printmaking too, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I used to do those, but um, um, I've been doing oil painting for 30 years. Ever since I came to Canada, I don't have big studio anymore, but uh, because, you know, in China, I, I, I was in art school, right? So we have huge studios for everything. So I don't have that anymore. So I switched to oil. And the more I do, the more I love it, you know, I did watercolor, I did um, uh, acrylic. Um, some of the painting I did both. I used uh, acrylic for the first coat because it dries so fast, right? And then um, the rest uh, I finish up with oil. I, I really love the, the, the texture, you know, and uh, it dries slow, so it allows you to, to move around the, the brush stroke Particularly, I, I like the oil uh, when you do sketching, out, outdoor sketching, and I just love it. Yeah. So, Mike, uh, you talked about this a little bit, but is there anything else you want to say about, uh, about why you carve from these materials? Um, yeah. Um, well, and, and why I chose, I, I chose 3D art instead of 2D art, um, I think is more relevant to to my to the things that I think about to the things that that uh, that work for me and um, and this is no disrespect to people who do 2d art at all um, but uh, for 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 me um, I believe that you look at a painting or you look at a print or you look at something on the wall but you experience sculpture you experience it. it it's um, the 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 point of view for um, a painting is uh, if if it's flat on the wall and you are looking at all the degrees of it, you could take thirty thousand different specific points of view to look at that picture on the wall. Whereas with a piece of sculpture, it's three sixty by three sixty, which is one hundred and thirty thousand different points of view. And it has mass. It has it, it. It has an entity, and and that's what sort of uh, made me a, a sculptor as opposed to a painter. Yeah. 
No, that's interesting. Yeah, there's every different form gives you a completely different experience. Yeah, definitely. Yep. Uh, Kirsten, why do why do you why do you work with fabrics and textiles? Um, a lot of the women in my family worked with um, either needlepoint or knitting or crafts of some kind. Um, at an early age, I would visit people's homes and they would have looms. Um, I was fascinated by all that, and also. I don't feel this way now, but when I started out, I felt like I wasn't an artist. So I felt that just, I wanted to work with my hands, but I didn't know if I could draw or paint um, because I think I had more of a narrow idea of what an artist was. I've overcome that now and, <laughs> um, and see myself as an artist. But at, at the beginning, I just felt like I wanted to make stuff and use my hands and dip into materials that weren't too messy, like threads and fabric. Yeah, there might be a bit of dust, but um, I tried pottery and that was a bit too messy for me. So <laughs> I, with textiles and, I mean, my studio is a mess and I, you know, I kind of share space with my kids. There's Lego behind me. I don't know if people can see the Lego <laughs> box. Thing. So life is pretty messy. I have two little boys um, who also enjoy doing crafts. Um, what held me in textiles, I think was, there's a lot of community there, a lot of traditions and, um, I just I wanted to keep exploring. I tried new techniques and it took me a while before I started to actually make pictures that were representative of different animals or flowers and things like that. But, um, but now that's one of my favorite things to do. I do dabble in abstract a little bit and I still really enjoy the hands-on tactile um, process. I do use sewing machines, but I combine it with hand embroidery, sometimes beads and some other materials. So it's, it's very hands-on and I really love the materials. Yeah. Awesome. That's cool. That's great. Those are, those are all wonderful things to think about everybody. Uh, so I guess let's just see if anybody has anything else that they've said. Yes. Uh, Tristan, uh, Tristan says amazing looking art. <laughs> well, thanks for that okay. Tristan. Uh, yeah, so I guess we'll uh, dive a little deeper into some of the uh, awesome artwork that you saw in that uh, little video uh, walkthrough. Uh, so let's start with Mike. Mike has this amazing uh, shark sculpture that I'm going to pull up right now. All right. Yeah. So Mike, why don't you uh, why don't you tell us about this? Well, I think. <laughs> I think I mentioned that um, that it was a, a tree I cut down in the backyard, <laughs> um, cherry wood. Um, uh, it's it's five feet long. It's probably a hundred pounds. Um, it took me a good two months to do it, two to three months to do it. Um, the way that it's it's uh, configured, I can either put it on um, the short stand that it's on now in case somebody wanted to have it on a table, but it's also able, um, I, there's been no um, physical uh, uh, holes or anything done on the underside of it so um, so that it can be hung. If, if uh, someone wanted to suspend it from a ceiling, that can be done without, uh, with being able to look at the underside of it and not seeing any holes or damage or anything. So uh, it's got uh, the stand that it's on right now, like I said, that, that is good for a table. Um, but the actual picture that we're looking at right now, which I provided to you, it is, it is on a floor stand. So it, um, it can be mounted anywhere any, in any of three different um, Three different ways. Um, it's a reef shark. Um, the eyes are made out of um, black soapstone and they're uh, drilled and countersunk. Um, uh, it, like, I, I don't know what more, <laughs> what more I can say about it. Um, there is a um, there is a video of it on my Facebook page. Uh, of the making of it and you can see right from the time that it's a, a, a cut down tree uh, right to the pro right through the process of turning it into what you see in front of you now. You have the magic hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now that's that's wonderful. It's beautiful. Yeah. 
And, um, and thank you for letting us know uh, where you can find the video about making it, Mike. Um, yep. in, the, uh, in the description of this video, uh, once we're done uh, recording and it lives on our, sure. on our YouTube channel. Um, okay. And we'll have links to everyone's uh, websites or if they mention their social media where people can find them, we'll have links to all that there so people are able to come in and find out more of your work. I've got, I've got both, both uh, a personal website and a YouTube channel or Excellent. a YouTube, a YouTube site. So. Perfect. That's wicked. Yep. There's well, actually, yeah. there's actually, I think, um, four, four different um, uh, videos. One is of the making of Kila, the beluga, one of making the shark, George, <laughs> another <laughs> one of Wally the walrus. And um, another one of uh, a bear that I did for my son. Um, anyway, it's, uh, uh, it's a grizzly bear that's fishing. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's great. Yep. No, and it's, it's such a, a wonderful piece uh, to see in, in person and how it, how it just hovers in the air as if, it's, as if it's swimming and you've got all the other, all the other fish underneath it here in, in yeah. the show. It's, 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 it's very cool. It's yep. a wonderful experience. Uh, all right. Uh, Juan Lee, why don't we talk a bit about uh, your, uh, your painting here? Okay, let's see which one you pulled out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, this one. I call it uh, the yellow head. It's lovely. Okay, I remember this one. It was uh, a late summer of uh, 2016. And we, uh, as me and my husband, Don, we had um, a road trip to Edmonton to, you know, we, we had a load of uh, car of the, um, um, the, the, the stuffs for our oldest son, um, Cameron, to move to Edmonton to, to, to pursuing his uh, PhD degree. <laughs> And uh, um, of course, on the way there, I didn't have much chance to, to admire anything because it was dark. So on the way back, I remember it was the, um, mostly I enjoyed because it was a sunny day, very beautiful. So we were passing um, by uh, Jasper and then um, the Yellowhead Pass. So I was um, constantly asking Don to stop. <laughs> um, he's the driver, of course, and, uh, to stop and then uh, to admire the scenery, the shimmering lake, the, the leaves. Actually, I was surprised it was late summer, but some of the leaves already turned to uh, yellow or orange. It was a beautiful scenery along the way. Uh, but, of course, I, I didn't paint, didn't have time. We drove, I think, one day, came back from um, Edmonton. So I took a lot of pictures. And uh, later on, um, I, was, um, I was able to paint out of those pictures and my memory, according to, and uh, uh, produced uh, quite a bit of um, paintings out of those uh, photos. And this is uh, one of them that uh, I try to to make it as close as possible to the, you know, sketching. So I want to, to make it really, uh, you know, everything is kind of rough. So yeah, this is a piece I, 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 I like, even if it's a small piece. And uh, you can see that um, I have a background that is like a, red or orange and uh, so I usually leave some of those I, I found it's more um, you know gives the painting like for example the the blue sky has tiny bit of um, uh, red here there sticking out it just makes it uh, more interesting yeah that's um, about it yeah no, that's a that's a lovely piece, and and like you were saying, uh, the sort of uh, capturing that sort of sketch quality and uh, and that red background coming through really gives it uh, much more of a personality and a feeling um, than as if you know you just copied your picture that you took you know 
Uh, exactly. Yeah, it's got a it's got a lot of life in it. Thank you. Okay, so I guess we're going to move on to uh, to Kirsten to talk about one of her pieces. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is a humpback whale um, that has been gotten itself entangled into some fishing debris. And the debris that you see in the piece is actually um, some fishing debris that I found on the beaches nearby. So it's not exactly to scale, but I think you kind of get the idea that, you know, this whale isn't doing so well. There's some scarring and there's a lot of um, stories in the media now about people who've gone and rescued whales that have been tangled and other sea mammals that have gotten tangled in fishing gear. Um, there's some good stories that have come out of it. Some of them have um, made it free again. Others, they're not quite sure what has happened to the whales. Um, but just a reminder, you know, the things that we do and the things that we discard, they do affect our world in many ways. Uh, the piece itself, the background is sort of like a, a quilting technique. There's fabrics that are layered and some sewing threads. Um, the actual whale is all stitched with hand embroidery. And then uh, the plastic oh. ropes are, um, are just stitched in place with a little stitch called a, a couching stitch, which holds the threads um, and ropes in, in place. Um, so I hope, <laughs> I hope that this whale gets rescued by someone and they can you know, cut off the, the fishing lines and <laughs> you can swim free again. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So I do really in love, I love the technique of, of hand embroidery and I hope that it does draw people's attention in and, and they see the, the details that I see in the, in the animals or the nature that I'm depicting. Yeah. Yeah. Your, your pieces, Kirsten, are, are, are incredibly detailed. It's a, uh, it's amazing to see um, all the little techniques, like all these little knots around the whale's uh, mouth, you know, and just to see all of the detail you're able to do with such fine, uh, fine movements and, and with, with your needle and thread. It's uh, definitely when, when you come in to see the exhibition, everyone, um, you're gonna spend a lot of time in front of all of the pieces, you know, to just get a, get a real good look at, uh, at all of the work that these amazing artists have, uh, have put in. Awesome, so did we have anything? Cool, excellent. Uh, well, we're just about uh, coming up, I think on a, on a, a good about time to, uh, to call it quits. Uh, so if, if there's anything else uh, any of you would like, uh, would like to add uh, to anyone watching, uh, now's your chance. <laughs> no, I think that was great. Thanks, Stephen. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank, um, thank like you everyone. For your wonderful artwork and thank you for sharing your thoughts uh, and inspirations tonight i think it's always wonderful for people to uh they really enjoy hearing hearing what you have to say you know and uh, and where everything comes from uh, and thank you to everyone who uh who tuned in tonight uh and for everyone who uh who will watch this again later uh thank you uh thank you and uh, just to let everyone know uh the exhibition which opened today uh, runs until August, or sorry, <laughs> not August, it runs until October 24th uh, of this year. Uh, and the gallery is open uh, Thursday through Saturday uh, from one to five. So you can come in uh, oh. any of those times to uh, check out uh, all this wonderful, beautiful, moving art uh, depicting the, uh, the natural world around us and, and, the, and the critters uh, that live there. So please come on in and, and see the show. Awesome. So uh, I guess we'll, we'll sign off uh, for tonight and, uh, and stay, stay safe, everyone, and, and stay creative. And uh, we will you see well. you later. Awesome. Great. Okay, thank you, Stephen. And it was good to see Kristen and Mike. And thank you for whoever is viewing this um, uh, live opening. Oh, and I did mention up at the top, but I'll say it again. Um, so the gallery is the Silk Purse Art Center uh, in West Vancouver at uh, 1570 Argyle Avenue. Yeah, so 
come on in. So thanks everyone uh, and have a great evening. Yep. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.